Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will continue some calculation on silicon crystal, but this time I will do something a little bit more complicated. But uh, don't worry, just follow the, uh, the steps and you can find the input and output files in GitHub. Okay, um, so this time I will calculate the band gap or and the density of state of uh, silicon. And you know that silicon is a semiconductor. It has a band gap that I get it from literature around 1.17 electron volt. This is um, this is basically measured uh, in experiment. As you have seen before, DFT does a uh, does a good job on uh, calculating the crystal structure or the molecular structure. So everything with respect to relaxation, uh, DFT does it quite well. But for this kind of band gap and band structure. Sometimes it is not so uh, reliable, and um, and I will show you in this uh, tutorial how DFT underestimates the band gap, and this is the uh, reference uh, density of state that we will also calculate uh, and compare it with it. Okay, so um, before we actually start the calculation, one thing that we will need today is the, the software called GNU plot. Um, but it is not really really necessary because for for the for plotting the density state you can also use uh, any other uh, programs like even Excel can do it. Yeah, but just for convenience, I will show you how to install it. Uh, apt get install genuine plot. So this is quite uh, simple, and yes. Okay, I clear the screen. The second thing is that we need to source, uh, as usual, the uh, Intel compilers. Um, uh, Bing. .sh. Yeah. And then everything is ready to be used. Um, the third, th uh, the third thing to check is whether you already have the sub program of Quantum Presso called DOS dot X. If you just uh, compiled uh, pw.x, and this one uh, will not uh, work today, um, to check it, you can list the files that are already in the in the in the like Cornell Espresso installation, and bin is the um, is the place where all of the programs are kept inside. So you see that I already compiled everything. So you see the uh, pw.x, that is what we usually use. And today we will also use uh, this program to uh, to basically interpret the output of uh, pw.x. OK, so with this at hand, we can already start uh, the calculation. So as usual, I have already put uh, the um, the different steps, the, the input files uh, in, in the folder. This time is not only one input file, but uh, we have different steps. So I will first wa walk you through the different steps that we, we want to do. The first step is uh, self-consistence uh, cal uh, calculation. And basically this uh, step, you can imagine that um, it calculates the wave function, the, the correct wave function of, uh, of silicon crystal. And this is the single point uh, calculation, and then it gives the total energy. And the second step is is we do a non self consistency calculation, and but we uh, we add a lot of uh, k points inside, so that uh, so basically it's a kind of an interpolation. Um, and uh, and the third step step is to get the density of state um, out from the from the previous calculations. And uh, the fourth step is to plot the density of state that we want to get. So, um, so let's take a look at different input files. The first input file, this is, uh, okay, I will put it here. Yeah. The first input file is what we uh, are very familiar with, and uh, it is uh, uh, SCF calculation, self consistency, single point calculation. And um, I add this line, this is not, not necessary. Because the default uh, is um, is as um, as written here, but um, basically it means that we we start our calculation from scratch, from from the beginning. 
there is an, another restart mode means that we want to restart continuing the uh, the calculation that we stopped before this is not not what we want to do um, the prefix is uh, silicon and uh, output there is uh, is this directory um, in this calculation it's very important that you keep the out output directory the same um, over the first three steps yeah and uh, the sort of potential directory and uh, everything else is 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 quite uh, the same as before that we have a F FCC lattice two uh, two atoms per lattice and only one type of atom that is silicon and uh, we uh, in this case we increase the cutoff of kinetic energy to um, to uh, increase the precision of the calculation we, we increase it to 50 okay and then the uh, crystal constant um, we choose the crystal constant to be the crystal constant that we get from the variation cell relaxation calculation that we did last time so basically the number the number here yeah so um, usually one ad advice is that if you do a DFT calculation and you want to put some crystal constant inside the best way to do it is to first do a, a variation cell um, relaxation and then get the optimum uh, crystal constant for that uh, pseudo potential and that you choose because for different um, for different DFT files for di different DFT methods the uh, the calculated uh, crystal constant may be a little bit uh, different from the uh, experimental uh, one so if you do use the um, uh, e experimental one it may give you some tension or some stress inside the crystal and and then it will it may change the band gap and change uh, different properties um, yeah but uh, as i said the the error between the calculation and the uh, the real experimental value is quite small it's just um, below two percent so in this case uh, it, it is um, it is okay yeah uh, for you to also uh, to choose the reference value so yeah but but in this case we will we will uh, stick with the common practice that uh, we use the result from the uh, variation of cell calculation yeah and then uh, i also improve the uh, convergence threshold for the electrons and uh, i lower it to uh, one ten to the power of, power of minus eight so that is more accurate and uh, the other things are not changed and uh, i also increase the k points to 888 eight, eight, because in this case this is just a single point calculation it is not a relaxation calculation that uh, th that will invoke a lot of uh, SCF calculations. So in this case, you can set uh, set k points to be larger. The more the k points is, the uh, more precise your uh, calculation would be. So in this case, I use 888, and uh, yeah. So th this is the first step. We will first run the first step, and then see, yeah. And uh, as usual, MPI, MPI run minus MP two. We use two cores and um, espresso Q uh, three Intel in P double X. Yeah, minus MP means input and uh, silicon one. One. Okay. Yeah. So this will be quite fast because it is only a single point calculation. Okay, it's finished. And then let's do the second step. Okay. In the second step, we need to refine this calculation because now the k points are just 8 by 8 by 8. It is not not many a uh, not many k points. So we open the input file for the second step that is the non-consistent uh, calculation F of course we change the calculation type to NSCF which means the non-self-consistent uh, calculation and uh, then we change the occupation to the um, tetrahedra because this is more appropriate for this NSCF calculation and um, and, and also is more appropriate for the calculation of tensile state 
Um, yeah, and then for the k points, we increase eight, eight by eight by eight to twelve by twelve by twelve. Yeah, so the more you, k points you have here, the more accurate your uh, result will be. So let's just uh, start. So NSCF two. NSCF two. Yeah. This will also be quite quick because in the end this is only one point calculation. Okay. And then the third step is to calculate the tensile state. Yeah. So here uh, we use another program that is dos.x and um, it's very important that you keep the output directory the same so that it, it can access the um, calculation from, from from before, from the steps before. And then uh, the prefix should also be, be the same as the step, steps before and uh, the, this is the output file of the tensile state and the tensile state is plotted from minus 9 to 16 e electron volt. Yeah. So we close this window and uh, it, this time we have we have to change it to a tensile state dot x and uh, three three. Remember that the real output of the uh, then that really contains the tensile state is not in this file, but in the file that you define in the input file. Yeah. So we start this. Okay, so now it's finished. Let's take a look. Yeah. So basically, now there are two output files. One is um, is this one. This basically uh, tells you like w what's happening and uh, what are the conditions and what are the outputs, what are the CPU times used. But there is no information about tensile state in this file. The real information is in this file here, which we specify in the input file. And you see that the first column is um, is the energy, the second second column is the tensile state, the third column is the integrated tensile state. Yeah, and you you already see that the Fermi level is um, is labeled here, and uh, to check the Fermi level, you can also go into the output of the non-self-consistent uh, calculation. That is the second step, and you just uh, scroll down to the to the bottom. Uh, I think just before the K points. Or oh, maybe after the K points. Yeah, you see that the Fermi energy is 6.1331 electron volt. Yeah, that's around the same. Okay, and then we want to plot the tensile state. So, so in principle, you can use whatever program you like because it is just uh, plot the x-axis being the first column and the y-axis being the second column. You can use Excel, you can use, use MATLAB, you can use whatever. Um, so here I, I would demonstrate that um, um, that we can use a GNU plot. And uh, and for GNU plot, you can either do it by, uh, by, by say, GNU plot and go inside the interactory, um, interactive uh, command line and then say plot and uh, dot toss dot that using one and two columns. Yeah, I think that should be fine. Yeah, so this is the tensile state. The x-axis is the um, is the energy and the y-axis is the tensile state and so you see there is a gap here and the Fermi energy is around 6 so it should be uh, within the band gap yeah um, another possibility is uh, let's clear the screen another possibility is to um, uh, write a small script 
for the GNU plot, something like this. Um, you set the scale to uh, auto scale and um, and set the title, set the x y label, and if you like, you can also set the range of x and y, and and then plot, um, and and uh, this is basically the legend, and uh, and the style that you plot. Yeah, you need to add the uh, last line because um, because basically if you if you uh, do the command without the last uh, last line. It will just flash uh, for a very short uh, while, and then uh, and then it will close automatically. And this prevents it from closing automatically. Yeah. Uh, yes. So for that, the GNU plot si dot uh, four. Yeah. And then it it does the same job. Yeah. So this is the uh, final final plot but uh, we want to get a number from the uh, from from this gap what we can do is to say yeah there, there should be a much better way to do this but I think that um, this is okay like, let's say around the six right and then we scroll it down to see what's the what's the value around six yeah you see that is zero, 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 and then the first point that it starts. Uh, let's say, let's take it around uh, five point seven one. So it's like five point seven one minus five point seven one. Go down. Minus six point four eight. So this is, this is the band gap that we calculate, and we put it here. Okay, and uh, so where where is the plot? Okay, it's here. So you see that the uh, that the calculation is quite uh, quite similar as what um, what we get from the reference, right? You get this. Uh, peak here and the shape of this peak and the structure of, of, of different peaks are quite similar. Um, but the error of the band gap is quite large this time. It is not something that um, that we talked about before around 1% at most 2 or 3% but now it's like 30%. Yeah? And it is smaller than the reference value. This is well known that DFT underestimates the band gap. Uh, in the future, I will talk about how to uh, how to improve uh, these DFT calculations and and how to improve the estimation of the band gap. So basically, you can include Hartree Fock uh, or or we say use hybrid functionals to solve this problem. Okay, so I hope in this video you have already learned how to calculate tensor state of silicon and how to how to estimate the band gap of silicon. And um, I hope to see you next time.